<laughs> okay, so I randomly found you on the World Wide Web uh, when I was doing my own personal research on off-grid living. Um, and so you have a, a process of having people come through here. You fill out an application. Um, you can stay from a week to three months? Well, it really depends. Okay. Um, it's definitely not open to the public. Mm -hmm. This is a working environment with a goal. Yeah. So people come here with a very specific intention, mm -hmm. and there's a variety of ways in which people can come. Uh, one odd way to come would be to come as a hermit. I have that experience myself, and I think it's a beneficial thing for yourself and, and your development. And so we can put somebody off in a cabin somewhere, and we can deliver them food, and they can do that. Really? Yep. Now, most people don't want to do that. That's fine. The average person that comes here is going to come to be a participant in this experiment, in this process. Mm -hmm. And what they focus on is going to depend on who they are. Sure. So they might be a musician. Mm -hmm. They might come here, and they might learn about Creative Commons music, how to compose their songs in this environment, and then release them to the world. They might come here as an artist uh, to learn from local craftsmen and fuse that creativity with their own visions of, of how art can be. And part of this is about recapturing our culture. Sure. Some people will come here like you, as a filmmaker, working on developing your skills as you explore your own values and how to share those with the world. Sure. We love that. Uh, some people come here as scientists, and we're going to do food science, and we're going to experiment with how we should eat best for nutrition, or how we can make nopales less slimy. Or <laughs> There's an infinite number of projects here. Some people will be doing echo building. Yeah. So, so yeah, when people are interested, and they've, they've researched, they've watched these videos, uh, they make an application, mm -hmm. and then we choose among the applications we have and design kind of a team of people mm -hmm. for that time period, and we mix them up and see what we create. Yeah. I happened to come here when there was no one else here, which was great for me because I get all this one-on-one -on -one time with you and really get to see, you know, all the details. And it's pretty amazing just walking around all the different... Um, experiments you have going on with food um, and just art. Like, there's a huge art studio where people can do anything from photography to woodworking to clay sculpting to painting. I mean, it's kind of like an artist's dream. And, like, if I would had total access to that all the time, I would totally use it. So, yeah, I mean, it's re a really unique environment that I think a lot of people would benefit from a lot of ways from. That's one of the things that makes this project really different, too, is, is, it, is it makes it difficult to understand. Uh, some people think it's unfocused because it has so many different aspects. But it has to be because we're not just trying to fix one cultural area. We're not trying to have one focus. We're trying to actually replace the entire culture. Mm -hmm. Well, not replace all of it, but pick and choose how we want it to work. Sure. And so that's going to be a difficult process, and that's going to have a lot of different opinions in the mix. And over time... We document how we do things. And this gets into another a topic we haven't talked about. That's decision-making and how a community works. Yeah. Now, in this case, it's a, a temporary community. A lot, it's transient. A lot of people are passing through. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it comes from my own visions, mm -hmm. from my studies and talking with people and my own experimentations in the past. But the goal is not to have some kind of brand land. Right. You know, obviously, I am the boss gay to a large degree right now. But the goal is to document how we do things, and it becomes Bosque culture land. Mm -hmm. How do we do things in the Bosque? From how we eat, to how we sleep, how we use time, how we interact with each other, exploring different ways of communicating. Every aspect of culture we want to design. Based on effectiveness. Based on effectiveness, based right. on... We're not saying, like, you have to go to sleep then and this and now, but, like, your body literally works better when you do this. Right. <laughs> and, we'll, and we'll have to pick and choose, you know, which things become rules. Yeah. And which things uh, just become kind of part of the culture as we do them. Sure. And, and things change. I mean, I've done things one way for a while, and a different group will come in, and I'll say, well, let's do it this way. And, and I see the effects. And so this is really a, a playful and experimental process, but the goal is to end up with a, a culture that is, is the rule set in a way. Mm -hmm. A, a one that's fused from all parts of culture from all around the world and even from all of time. So, because all cultures, I mean, it's not like we live anywhere where there's no rules. Right. In any social group, there's things you can do that will get you ostracized. There's rules you're, that are applying to you. There's always a government on your ass. Yeah. Um, there's physical rules of just, you know, how can you use the land without destroying it? 
definitely. When I, yeah, I think a lot of people would be like, oh, rules, and like then they're like, commune or something. And, and then, yeah, in all actuality, it's like we grew up learning all of our, like in our social construct of all these rules. It's just, here's a, a whole bunch of rules, but these are actually working better than these rules. And then just being open enough to accepting them in, in the logical sense. Cause and this has been a really <laughs> interesting process for me as an individual because, you know, I, I'm a very freedom-loving kind of guy. Mm -hmm. I, I want people to be have a lot of free expression and diversity of ways of living, and, and I, I come from rejecting kind of a rigid system I grew up with. Mm -hmm. But in that rejection, then, I can't just say, okay, well, screw it all, I can do whatever I want, however I want, sure. as I've tried to build things and, and interact with people. So my vision now is, okay, what base set of real rules mm -hmm. do we have where if you don't follow the rule, there's a problem. Yeah. We're going to have to deal with it. As small a base as possible. Yeah. We're going to limit that base so that we actually can support our, our, us being able to trust each other, right. have more freedom above that, more wealth culturally and, and monetarily even. Where, for example, if we have rules about what happens when I lend you a tool, yeah. do you then lend it to someone else? Mm -hmm. That would be a rule violation, in my view. Yeah. Because then, who's responsible when it's abused? Right. You know, or or if I lend it to you, do you have responsibility to return it to me in the place where you got it, or do you say to me, "Oh yeah, I left that over there"? You know. Right. And this is a minor issue. All I'm doing is lending you something. Right. But there's a thousand issues like this. Yeah. You know, how are we going to communicate? Am I going to be sarcastic with you because I think that's funny? But really, it's a subtle way of undermining you, controlling you, and bullying you. Yeah. You know, if I don't like your shirt, do I really need to say that? <laughs> Even though we like radical honesty and being honest, do I really need to mention that? Yeah. Or do I say to the people whose clothing I like because they're expressing something cool, do I say, wow, that's awesome? If somebody's in a costume, do yeah. I say, wow, that person's really full of themselves? <laughs> They just think they have so, you know, a big ego and everything. Or do I say, what, they're having a great time. Let's have some fun. <laughs> do I support them in being awesome? Yeah. You know? I mean, I, w I would think so. Um, yeah, I don't know. And a lot of that, that, I think, comes from what we've learned growing up in our own insecurities, where we would, like, tend to judge somebody. We were talking about even costumes the other day and how great it is because it like lets you be free um yeah so i say support awesomeness yeah <laughs> and, and and this gets so basic because um i was lucky enough in a way to to grow up in a in a culture that i was very uncomfortable in and had to break away from mm -hmm. i didn't have the chance to be normal yeah there's no option and so i ended up being attracted to people who aren't normal and really you find a lot of people who are normal mm -hmm. don't feel normal inside and they feel trapped and they feel judged, and they want to break out of that, mm -hmm. and they're afraid. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm here to help. <laughs> right. I'm going to give them permission. I'm going to give them validation. We're going to take photos, and we're going to explore art, and enjoy radical free expression, while we have this base set of rules that keeps us from hurting each other, that keeps us from damaging the forest or people. And so this is this really tricky thing. Where that line is and in which rule is not always clear, but that's a fun game we're working with. Yeah. I mean, it definitely... Uh, t takes awareness, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, you need somebody down here who's aware.